Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to deal with the question of what is the composition of two relations? Okay. So once again, like all previous videos in this particular series when we've been talking about relations, uh, we have created relations from a particular cross product. Uh, we have defined a relation to be a relation on a particular set. What we mean by that is that we have a particular set, in this case A contains the elements 2, 4, 7 and 9. We've constructed the cross product of A with itself. This particular table helps us to identify all the ordered pairs that are in the cross product. We've taken them ordered pairs, we've put them into a set. This set is A cross A, or the cross product of A with itself, and it is a list of ordered pairs, or a set of ordered pairs. Uh, and what we know is that a relation is simply a subset of this cross product. So let's choose two relations. Uh, let's say R1 is the relation okay, uh, that takes 2 to 2, okay, it takes 4 to 7, and let's say for argument take, argument's sake it takes 7 to 4, and once more let's say it takes uh, 9 to 2. Okay, That's the relation R1. One, okay. Uh, let's create another relation. Okay, let's call this S one. Okay, and let's say S one takes, let's say it takes uh, two, two to nine. Okay, uh, let's say it takes seven to four. Okay, and let's say it takes uh, four to two. Okay, and let's throw in one more. Uh, let's say it takes. Uh, let's say it takes 2 to 9. Okay, well we've already got 2 to 9. Let's say it takes 7 to 9. Okay, So we have two relations, R1 and S1. Both of them are subsets of the cross product of A with itself. So both of them by definitions, definition are relations. And what we'd like to construct is we'd like to construct what's known as the composition of two relations. Uh, and suppose the first composition that we'd like to construct is maybe is maybe the R1 after S1 and maybe the other composition that we'd like to construct is S1 after R1 okay now the way we're going to do this is let's concentrate on the first one okay R1 after S1 okay uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the set that the relation is defined on or that the relation has been built on and we're going to create a couple of nodes okay let's say we have this is the node 2 this is the node 4, this is the node 7, this is the node 9, okay? And what I want to do is I want to create a mapping from these domain values into a set of range values. 2, 4, 7, and 9. Actually, what we're constructing here is a graph or a digraph. It's a different representation of the digraphs that we've seen previously, okay? Just in this situation, we're defining the domain values and then we're defining the range values. It happens that they're both the same set, okay? Because our relation has been built on this set. So let's do this first one, this composition. R1 after we do S1. So that's really important is that we don't operate from left to right we operate from right to left. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first mapping which is S1. So what I do is I take each ordered pair, I take their domain element, and I put an edge from the domain element into the range element. So 2 is taken to 9. So I take 2 and I map it down into, into 9 as a, directed, as a directed edge. 7 is taken into 4. So I take 7 and I map it across into 4. Okay. So 7 is taken to 4. 4 is taken to 2. So I take 4 and I map it across into 2. 7 is taken to 9. Okay. So 7 here is taken to 9 down here. Okay. So this particular graph represents the relation S1. Okay. So let's say that represents S1. Okay. The mapping from the set A into the set A. Okay. So we've just constructed this particular mapping. So now let's do a mapping from the set 2, 4, 7 and 9, which is the set A, okay, that represents the mapping associated with R1. 
Okay, so now for R1, these are going to be the domain values and we have to create the range values. So the range values, once again, is because the set, the relation is built on the set A, the range values are 2, 4, 7 and 9. Okay, so R1 tells us that 2 should be mapped to 2. So let's take 2 and let's map it across to 2. It tells us that 4 should be mapped to 7. So let's take 4 and let's map it to 7. It tells us 7 should be mapped to 4. So let's take 7 and let's map it to 4. And it tells us that 9 should be mapped to 2. So let's take 9 and let's map it up to 2. Okay. So this is what the graph of the composition looks like. But we're interested in the relation. So we're interested in R1 after S1. And that's a set or it's a relation because it's going to be a set of ordered pairs. So what we do is we take each value where there's an edge coming from it and we map it through to to the to the final to the final range yeah so you can see that 2 2 is taken to 9 and then 9 goes up to 2 so 2 is taken to 2 okay uh, there's no other outgoing edge on 2 so we can move on to the next the next ordered pair which is 4 is taken to 2 and 2 is taken to 2 so in this case 4 is taken to 2 okay the next one says 7 is taken to 4 and 4 is taken to 7. So 7 goes directly to 7. Okay. The next one says 7 is taken to 9. Okay. And, oh sorry, 7 is taken to 4 and 4 is taken to 7. Okay, that's good. We we'll have that. So 7 is taken directly to 7. Then we have the next outgoing edge is 7 is taken to 9 and 9 is taken to 2. So 7 is taken directly to 2. So 7 is taken to 2. And there's no other edges that we can follow. Okay. Uh, I suppose there is an edge here that takes 7 to 4. But there's no way to get to this particular edge here okay, uh, from S1. So there's no, there's no ordered pair in this particular relation. So what we have here is, this is R1 after S1. So this is R1. So what we've done is we've done S1 first, then we've done R1, okay? So that's the relation R1 after S1. So let's have a look at the relation S1 after R1, okay? So the relation S1 after R1, uh, once again what we do is we build the digraph, okay? So we're going to have, uh, we're going to do uh, S1 after R1, so we have to do R1 first, so we have domain values, let's say 2, 4, 7, and 9, and that needs to be mapped into 2, 4, 7, and 9. Okay, so what we're doing is we're doing S1 after R1, so this is going to be S1 after R1, so we need to do R1 first. So R1 we know 2 is taken to 2. Okay. We know that 4 is taken to 7. We know that 7 is taken to 4. Okay. And we know that 9 is taken to 2. Okay. So this represents the relation in a graph R1. So now what we do is we take these values as domain values and we map them into range values for S1. So they need to be taken into 2, 4, 7, 7. And 9. Okay. And S1 tells us that 2 is taken to 9. So 2 is taken to 9. It tells us that 7 is taken to 4. So 7 is taken to 4. It tells us that 4 is taken to 2. So 4 is taken to 2. And it tells us that 7 is taken to 9. Okay. So this mapping from here across is the mapping S1. So what we have done is we've done R and then we've done S1. Or we've done S1 after we've done R1. Okay, so the relation in this particular case, S1 after R1, is the set that contains all the ordered pairs that take us from this domain here straight through to this particular range. Okay, so let's see what we can do. We can go from 2 to 2 and then straight through to 9. So there's a mapping from 2 through to 9. Okay, there's no other edge coming out from 2, so there's no other mapping. Yeah. Uh, we could go from 4 to 7 
and now it branches off in two directions. So we could go from 4 to 7 and 7 to 4. So we could take a journey straight through to 4 from 4. So we have 4, 4. But we could have taken 4 to 7 and then 7 to 9. So we could have 4 to 9. Okay. There's no other edges leading out here Okay, uh, on this particular journey. Let's move on to 7. We can go from 7 to 4 and from 4 to 2. So we can go directly from 7 to 2. So we have 7 to 2. Uh, there's no other edges leading out. So let's have a look at 9. 9 takes us from 9 to 2 and then from 2 to 9. So in this situation we could go directly from 9 to 9. So we can go from directly from 9 to 9. Okay. So what we've constructed now is the relation R1 after S1 and also the relation S1 after R1. Uh, what we can see is, first of all, from a cardinality perspective, is that R1 after S1 has four elements. And S1 after R1 has one, two, three, four, five. So an important thing is this, is that it is not necessarily the case that R, R after S is the same as S after R. And this is a small example of the way that worked out. Okay. Uh, so guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that video was some way informative. Okay, thank you.